This is a great example of a question where if you are just really a math whiz, if you kind of just have an intuitive understanding about how things work, you're going to look at this and know exactly what to do. There's a very easy, convenient solution. You're going to see that, okay, if I add these two equations together, I'm going to end up with kind of like an X minus two because these two pieces are going to cancel each other out, right? I mean, it's, it's a minus four Y plus seven and then a plus four times Y plus seven. They cancel out nicely. So if I add this down, I'm going to get two times X minus two equals, well, 117 plus 442. You're probably reaching for your calculator for that. 117 plus 442 is 559. Now, just we're at point, we went from point A to point B. How do we get to point C, which is this part here? Well, we would multiply by three, right? If we multiplied by three, we'd have not two X minus twos, but six of them, right? So if we do the same thing to the other side, 559 times three is 1677, which is the answer. So this is maybe a 10 second question if you are kind of just really confident with that kind of move. But if you're not, there's no excuse here. Maybe it takes you a minute instead because you got to enter it into Desmos, but they're really just looking for um, a solution to this system basically. So let's just do it the old fashioned way, right? Let's go into Desmos, let's take these equations and let's just type them up, right? So let's type them up by, I'm gonna use my keyboard here. I'm very excited about this. So X minus two time or minus four times Y plus seven. And that is equal to 117. So it, it's drawing a line here. It's not on the screen, but it's okay. We'll worry about that later. Uh, and then we have again, X minus two uh, plus four times Y plus seven, Y plus seven. So you can see this is where you're losing time is the typing equals 442. And basically, yeah, we got to find the the intersection point. You can see from the numbers that they're big, right? So let's just let's just so, zoom out. We'll find it eventually. There it is, right? So this is giving us the values of X and Y, right? So 281.5. That's my value of X. So now I would just say, all right, let's take that 281.5. Let's put it here. X equals 281.5. So we don't forget. And going back to Desmos or whatever calculator you want, what did they want from us? They wanted six times X minus two. So that's six times 281.5 minus two, and there it is, the 1677 that we got before. So definitely longer, you, you have to go through that process of typing it into Desmos, but you're gonna have to make these kinds of decisions about whether you are really confident with this kind of algebra where things just kind of work out nicely, or whether you're just looking for the points. And there's a guaranteed 10 points just by going to Desmos and doing it the old fashioned way. The only thing you could really mess up here is forgetting that they're not asking for X or for Y. They're asking for this weird six times X minus two, but that's a very common SAT move. So we have to be prepared for that at least. Otherwise you're just kind of scrolling around and typing things in, just make sure you type them right and you're good to go. Um, the, the danger Danger for stuff like this. Like some people are like, well, you know, of course I'm going to do it this way because it's it's easier, uh, it's faster. But um, the danger here is twofold. Number one is think about not just how much time you're spending doing the steps to get to that answer, right? Not just the work that I showed here. How how long would it have taken you to realize? that that's the work that you're supposed to do, right? A shortcut isn't a shortcut if it takes you a minute to figure out what the shortcut is, right? So that's a good example of like, if Desmos is just your kind of gut reaction and it takes zero seconds to realize if I plug this into Desmos, I'm gonna get the answer, then maybe that's the better way to go because over the long haul of the, uh, the question, you're still gonna save time because you're not debating what the best strategy is. You're just getting right to it and that's that. But if you do look at this and you kind of instantly recognize what to do, that's great. But the danger is with algebra, we often have feelings like that. We often have that kind of intuitive like, oh, if I just do this, this is going to work out perfectly. And sometimes the SAT designs questions where that feeling is wrong, right? We feel like there's an easy solution, but it turns out there's not. And for many people, it's very difficult to kind of separate those two times, right? The times where your intuition is correct and there are times where your intuition is leading you into a trap. So again, if you feel like that happens a lot, where you feel like you've got a good kind of instinctive response to a question, and 
And then later when you, you know, get your results back for the test, you end up where you were wrong on that question, right? Your intuition led you into a trap. Then you shouldn't trust your intuition. You should go to the calculator and do it that way because your intuition is unreliable. So this question is so great because it really forces you to kind of think through what are your instinctive responses? What are your default strategies? And what is the best way to kind of pace yourself on the entire section so you are maximizing your points? So that might mean giving up on some harder questions later by spending more time on something like this where you know you can get the answer. But I think it's worth it. So you got to think that through as you're planning for what you're going to do on test day.